So I'm going to do this one more time and this time show you the corresponding percentages that also work really well with this rule. So let's say this time we have a mean of 25 and we have a standard deviation of 2. So the mean in the middle at 25, we travel a distance of 2 either side. So 25 minus 2 is 23 and 25 plus 2 is 27. I'll do the same for these two over here. So with this first one, I know that between 23 and 27, I'm going to have 68% of all the data in that group there. So I'm just going to color this in. So in this green section, we definitely have 68% of all the data between 23 and 27. What if the question asked you, what percentage of data lies above 27? How would we answer that? What we're then being asked for is what is everything from this line upwards? So they're asking us for everything that's in this purple section when they say what percentage of data lies above 27. So how would you work that out? Well, let's go with what we know. We know that there's 68% in this green section. And there must be 100% in the whole thing because at some point we're counting all of the data in the distribution. So I could probably say with some assurity that if I colored in this side as well, then now I've got the whole graph colored in, I must have 100%. So if I know the green bit's 68, I can say, okay, 100% minus 68% gives me 32%. So with these two purple tails added up, we have 32% left over in each of these two. So if there's 32 in this plus this, what must each one of them be? Now remember, it's perfectly symmetrical about this mean. So this is balanced either side. So we can just say 32 and divide it in half because there must be then 16% in each side. Because if these two combined are 32%, half of 32 is 16, so each one of them has 16%. So if the question said, what percentage of data lies below 23? Well, it would be all of this purple bit down the bottom. This would be 16%. And if the question asked you, what percentage of data lies either below 23 or above 27? So it wants to know down here, this section, and up here, this section combined, then the answer would be 32%. It's those two added together. Let's do that again over here. So if we have between 21 and 29, which is two standard deviations away from our mean, if we know that within this orange section, there's 95% of all the data in there, 95%, what is left over in these plain white bits? What is left in this tail and this tail? The way to work that out is to say, okay, 100%, which is all of it, minus that 95% that's in the middle, how much is left over? 100 minus 95 is 5%. So in these two tails combined, there's 5%. So what does that mean is in each one of them? Well, it's half of that 5. So in this tail, there's going to be 2.5%. And in this tail, there's going to be 2.5%. Because then we have 2.5 plus 95 plus this next 2.5, and all of that added up gives us 100. So then you can say things like, you know, if the question asks you what percentage lies below 21, well, it's from this point down, so that's the 2.5%. If the question asks you what percentage lies above 29, which is that line upwards, the answer is 2.5%. And if the question asks you for them both, it's at, it says what percentage lies either below 21 or above 29, what, uh, what are the extremes, then the answer would be 5% because it's those two tails added up. And of course, this works for the three standard deviations. We've got between 19 and 31, which is three standard deviations either side. In this big pink section in the center, we have 99.7% of all the data. 99.7%. So what is left over from 
it's 100 minus 99.7, which gives us 0.3%. So this side, this last little bit down here, and this last little bit down here, those two added together make up the total of 100%, which means there's 0.3 in those combined. So if this and this together add up to 0.3, what's in each tail? It's half of that, which is 0.15% and 0.15% over here. So the question might say, what percentage of data lies below 19? Meaning they don't want to know what that top tail is doing. They just want to know everything that's below 19. So it's just this side, of just this tail, which is 0.15. The same is true if they ask you just for what is above 31. This bit here, the answer would be 0.5. If they wanted to know those two things combined, they would say what percentage of data lies either below 19 and or above 31. And lastly, if the question asks you what percentage of data lies above 25, where does 25 sit on our graph? It's the mean. It's right in the middle. So that's this line here. So if the question is asking you what percentage of data lies above 25, they want to know this whole half of it here, this blue section. So how do we work that out? Can we apply any of these 68, 95, 99.7 rules or any of their corresponding percentages? Well, not really, but it's as simple as this. The 25 is the mean, which is right in the center, right? So if it's in the middle, halfway through the data on either side, what have I colored in here? What percentage of the bell? I've colored in half of it, which is 50%. So this, the answer to that is really simple. If they ask you what percentage lies either side of the mean, the answer is just 50%. So how is this sort of thing examined? Well, this is a question that appeared on the 2007 exam one. This was question four, and this is asking you to use that rule. So the question says the length of three month old baby boys is approximately normally distributed. There's those words you should look out for with a mean of 61.1 centimetres and a standard deviation of 1.6 centimetres. The percentage of three month old baby boys with a length greater than 59.5 centimetres is closest to, and then they give you a bunch of options. So let's just quickly draw ourselves a little bell curve with a mean in the middle of 61.1. Now you could fill in uh, the intervals either side, so going down three and up three, but 59.5 is obviously less than 61.1, so I don't need to do these three up here. I'm just going to go down um, standard deviations. So I'm going down by increments of 1.6. So 61.1 minus 1.6, ah, well, what do you know? It's 59.5. So I've already found that interval that I'm looking for. It's this one here. So they want to know the percentage of three-month-old baby boys with a length greater than 59.5. So they want to know everything from that line upwards. Okay, so I've got a large chunk of the graph over here. It's going to be a fairly big percentage, so it's not going to be that one or that one. And it's not going to be 68 because that would be if it was between 59.5 and one standard deviation up. So but if it was between there and there, then it would be 68. But that's not what I'm looking for, so it's not that one either. What I'm looking for is everything from that line onwards. So the easiest way to work this out is to say, remember our corresponding uh, percentages. When we had that rule, let me just get a different color. When we had that rule that said 68% was in the middle, remember there was 32% making up the other rest of the hundreds, so therefore there was 16% in each tail. Well, in this case, this is one of the tails we've got. This section in here that's below 59 0.5 is that 16% tail that falls downwards of that point that's one standard deviation away from the mean. So now I have everything that's upwards from there. So if I know there's 16% in that side and what I'm effectively trying to find is everything from there onwards, I want to know what, what percentage has a length greater than that. 
then what I want to know is 100% minus that last corresponding 16. So 100 minus 16 is 84. And what do you know? That's one of my answers. Another way that you could work it out is to say what we're looking for is this 68% in here plus this remaining tail. So you know, so I'm talking about that plus this orange bit here. So you know that the part in the middle is 68 and you know that the tail here is 16 because that's one of those two corresponding remaining tails. So you could say 68 plus 16, which would also give you 84. So the answer for this question is D, 84%. So even though they haven't asked you specifically for one of these 68 percentages, 95, 99.7, using the information you have about corresponding percentages that work within those, this is how they might phrase one of the questions to you. And from there, you just use logic. This question appeared on the 2006 exam one, and it was also question four, just randomly. Um, and the question says, the head circumference in centimetres of a population of infant boys is normally distributed with a mean of 49.5% and a standard deviation of 1.5%. This sounds freakishly familiar to the last year's question or the next year's question. I think they're rehashing their own material. But anyway, 400 of these boys are selected at random and each boy's head circumference is measured. Okay. The number of these boys with a head circumference of less than 48 centimetres is closest to. Okay, so let's start with we've got a mean of 49.5 and a standard deviation of 1.5. So on my bell curve, and I can tell it's a bell curve question because they've said it's normally distributed. So those are the words you look out for. I've got, hang on, I'll just redraw that a little bit smaller so you can see my scale. There we go, a mean of 49.5, and we're traveling 1.5 in each direction, and we're trying to get to the interval that will say 48. So I'm probably going to go downwards, and I don't need to calculate these upwards ones just for now. So the first standard deviation away is 1.5. So 49 minus 1.5 is 48. Aha, I've already hit the interval I'm looking for, and it's one standard deviation below the mean. So I'm going to be dealing with the rule that corresponds to 68% because I'm one standard deviation away. Okay, so now what do we do? 400 of these boys are selected, and we want to know the number of these boys with a head circumference of less than 48. So we're talking about this percentage in here, less than 48. That's what I'm trying to find, that coloured in section. Okay, so what percentage is that first of all? We do want to know the number of boys, but let's figure out the percentage first. If this is 68 in here, the two tails combined must be 32, which means in each tail there's 16%. So I've got 16% of all the boys have a head circumference of less than 48. But I want to know the number of those boys. There are 400 in total. They're selected at random and measured. So if there's 400 total, I want to know 16% of 400 to work it out. So you just do that on the calculator. So in case you don't know, to work out a percentage on the calculator, you would type in 16 and then per cent per meaning divide, out of, and then cent meaning centigrade, as in cent century, centenarian, everything that starts with cent means 100. So we say 16 divided by 100, and you'll get 0 0.16. And then you times it by, because of means times, you times it by 400. So you say 16 divided by 100 equals times 400 equals, and that's your calculator steps. But anyway, the answer that you get is 64. And here we go right here. The answer to this question is C. So there you have another example of using the 68, 95, 99.7% rule and the corresponding percentages. So in this case, using a number that, um, a percentage that corresponded to 16, using corresponding percentages and common sense. We know that it's 16%, but they're not asking us for the percent. We know there's 400 overall, so we need to work out what 16% of that 400 is. So that's how this rule works.